Hey, welcome back guys. Now we've been using Grammar Police for the last two years in the YouTube channel. And this is by far probably the most requested tutorial that I've done in the YouTube channel. And that is how to install Grammar Police, how to uh, get the config the way you want it, and how to customize this bad boy. And I'm gonna show you how to do it in today's video. Now the best way to do this is to break it out into two parts. So if you've been using Grammar Police, you already know how to install it, but you just wanna learn how to customize the files to make it even cooler for you, but you just can't figure out how then you're gonna to wanna to watch part two of Grammar Place install tutorial. But if you're just now starting this for the very first time and just wanna learn how to install it and to get it to actually work properly, then you want to watch part one and then move on to part two. Part one is gonna be mainly for beginners to get it installed properly, picking the right folder, maybe a few tricks and tips on how to get your microphone to work better. Then you're gonna to wanna to watch part one and then move on to part two. So hopefully that makes sense and we'll continue with today's tutorial. Now, if this video helps you in any way, even in the slightest, do me a big ass favor, log into YouTube, hit the like button, leave a comment down below because YouTube loves you, I guess. Is that what I'm supposed to say? Hell, I don't know. So let's go ahead and get started right into this. Uh, let's go to Grammar Police. Now you're gonna have the RAR file on your desktop. All links will be provided in the description as well as the pinned comment. This is a RAR file. So you will need to have WinRAR or 7-Zip on your PC. If you don't know what that is, go to Google, type in WinRAR for free, thank me later. Let's open up the Grammar Police RAR file, take the folder, and then throw it on your desktop, or you could do extract too. Now we will not need this RAR file anymore. We have the Grammar Police folder. We have another file over here I'll talk to you about in just a moment. Let's go ahead and open this. You're gonna have a Grand Theft Auto 5 folder. You're gonna have a Textures folder. Don't worry about this yet. We'll install it here in a little bit. Go to Grand Theft Auto 5. You're gonna see LSPDFR in lower caps, a Plugins folder, an IPT.common, and then a Rage Native UI that is out of date. So if you install this, it's not gonna work anyway. So that's why we are going to give you another link to the Rage Native UI. So what you're gonna do is go to the internet. I'm gonna leave a link for you down in the description, but if you go to Google, type in Rage Native UI, you can always do this in the future too for other plugins. And uh, it requires an updated Rage Native UI. So let's go ahead and click on the first link and you'll see it right here, it says latest. And then my link will always be the latest. So it'll be provided for you down below. And you go down here and you download the zip file. So that is what's on my desktop right now. So we have the Rage Native UI, which is right here, and we have an outdated one right here. So we're gonna pull up our main game directory. I'm sure most of you already know how to do this, but this is the main game directory over to the left. This is where your GTA 5 is located at. If you're having difficulty, look to the top right. There is a three minute video on how to find your main game folder for Epic Games, Steam, and Retail. So let's go back up and we have our Grand Theft Auto 5 folder that is open inside our Grammar Police uh, file right there. So you're going to see the LSPDFR folder in lower caps. It will merge with this one over here to the left, which is your main game directory. And then you have a plugins folder and that will get merged into this plugins folder right over here. That's the good thing about Windows is that you just drag and drop and then the folders will end up where they need to be. So we're going to take the LSPDFR folder. We're going to take the plugins folder and then we're going to take the IPT.com and need to have that file. Don't worry about the Rage Native UI yet. Just take these three files, drag it right into your main game directory down here and you're going to let it fall. Now this Rage Native UI, don't worry about it. I got you covered. This one right here is the one that we just downloaded. So if you open up the Rage Native UI that we just downloaded, the zip file, you're gonna drag these two files. Even if you think you have it, make sure you install this one because this is the one that's up to date as of May 28th, 2022. Now, if you're watching this video six months from now, they may have had another update. So keep that in mind that you just go to that link, no matter what, download the latest one, and you're gonna drag this right into your main game directory. And even if it's the same one you have, doesn't matter, just go ahead and replace the files. All right, so I'm gonna show you where the folders ended up really fast. The lowercase LSPDFR ended up in this folder right here. This is your main game directory. So if we dive in here, go to audio, scanner, and you're gonna see a folder called Grammar Police Audio. So if you go here, this is where all the uh, different street names the, uh, for example, the code 99. Code 99, officers require assistance. So if you're wondering where the audio files come from, that is where they go. So I wanted to educate you on where that goes. And let's back up to the main game directory. And this is what we're gonna dive into is the plugins folder. We're gonna open the plugins folder and uh, you're obviously gonna have LSPD first response installed. So that should be there. And you're gonna probably have a few other things installed or you may not. It just kind of depends on how you have your system set up. But if you go to LSPD fire and upper caps, we're going to go ahead and dive into this. You're definitely going to probably going to have more plugins installed, uh, but I went ahead and took mine out for the demonstration of the install process of Grammar Police to make it a little bit easier to for you to view. Grammar Police DLL, we're going to leave it alone. We're going to go into the Grammar Police folder. So when we dive into here, you're going to see five files. 
We're not going to go to each one of these, but I do want to point out, if you go to the audio, something kind of cool I want to show you real fast. Now you're going to see several different WAV files. So if you are not happy with this, this is the panic button, by the way. Pretty cool, right? So if you're not happy with that, say if you live in the UK or if you live in Germany or if you live other places across the pond, right? Uh, if you're not happy with the panic button sound, you can download your own. I'm not going to go through the details of how to do that, but there's a way you can always download sound files and whatnot. And you can convert it or make sure it's saved into like a wave file and make sure it's you know short and sweet. And then you can rename it to match it, whatever's inside this folder right here, a grammar police audio. So if you go here, make sure it goes in the same pathway, LSPD Fire, Grammar Police, and then Audio. And then you can replace these files. Just make sure that it's named exactly the same thing as like, for example, Priority Start. Here's the end. Now I like that because that matches, you know, like 5M, for example. And here's a few of the pushes for the buttons. And then here's another one. Now that's another one. And then here's one more. Okay, so if you're not happy with those, you can always, um, you know, even go to, you can probably go to Google and uh, type in WAV file editor for free and then download that program and you can boost the audio or decrease the audio if you see where I'm going with this. You know, if you're not happy with Grammar Place audio files and just make sure it is named exactly like this. Now let's back up a little bit and you're going to see your five folders. You're going to see audio, documentation, grammar, interface, and textures. So when I installed Grammar Police two years ago, the very first thing that I did was went to the documentation to learn how to use the mod, uh, learn what phrases to use, these kinds of things. So uh, what I would invite you to do is go to the phrase guide. You're right here, it's in English. They, have, they do have one in Spanish, but if you go here to the phrase guide, you can see uh, different things that the grammar police will recognize. And uh, so I'm not gonna go on through everything, but make sure you read that. Uh, that way you understand how to use grammar police. There's a couple of the things that I wanna kind of point out to you as well, is that Opus 49, if you go to his uh, grammar police download, Right here and i gave you the link down below if you go to here you can kind of understand a little bit about a grammar place there but go down a little bit to right here tutorial videos so if you really want to know the in-depth aspects of grammar police and how it works and how to uh, create your own xml files and these kinds of things he walks you through step by step and it's about 30 minutes worth of very in-depth overview on how to do that so i would invite you to do that and then also, if you're having a bad difficulty with grammar police, you can't get it to work, nothing seems to work, your microphone's not working, then go to his Discord server. It's right here. He's got a whole team of people over there. They're very knowledgeable. They've even helped me out quite a few times. So make sure you do that. So there's a lot of valuable information in here, and I would just encourage you to kind of read these. Uh, one in particular we're gonna pull up right now is the grammar police folder, the documentation folder, and then the config file. So we're gonna open this up, it's a text document. And you'll notice right here, uh, right here it says call sign, and you're gonna notice language. We're gonna talk about that in the next step of the uh, the editing process, of the customization of Grammar Place. So the very first thing I want you at this screen right here, where you see the five files. So the very the very first thing you do is see that default config file. If we open this, it'll say right here, "Do not edit this file." So we're going to make a copy of the default uh, config file. Right click, and we can go to copy, and then right click paste. Uh, you can also left control C that and then left control V if you want to paste it. It should look like this default dash copy. So we're going to rename this and we're going to name it custom. It needs to be named exactly like that. So when he updates grammar police, uh, everything's going to be custom files we're going to be creating in today's video. Uh, so every time you update grammar police, you don't have to worry about overriding your own custom files, which I think is brilliant, to be honest. So let's go into the custom config file. Let's pull this up. It should open in notepad or like a word pad. And we're going to enlarge this. And we're going to talk about call sign in just a second. But one thing we want to focus on right now is the language that is installed on your PC. A lot of people that are having problems with grammar police, the language or the region language pack that is installed on your PC is incorrect or it's not labeled correctly right here. So let me show you uh, a pretty easy uh, step that you can do on your PC and you can go to settings. So go down to the Windows search. So go ahead and go to Windows search and type in settings. And it should look something like this if you're on Windows 11, for example, but if you're on Windows 10, it may look a little bit different. Uh, look for time and language. So when you click on that, language and region. So when you click on this, uh, we wanna go ahead and go into this and you're gonna see that it's gonna populate with whatever language pack is installed on your PC. 
So if you are in Great Britain, it'll be something different. If you're in, um, you know, uh, Spain or if you're in Germany, things like that, uh, it'll be a different language pack. So once again, that config file, I told you it'd come in handy. Go back to config file right here. So remember right here, this is the config file that I just showed you a second ago. So the language pack, here are the correct abbreviations that Grammar Police supports. So if your country uh, is not labeled here, then you cannot use Grammar Police. You have to use the menu system. I'm sorry about that, but that, that's just the way the Grammar Police works. So uh, for example, I will do, I'll do you a favor. We'll do Great Britain. So if your language pack on your, on your settings on your PC is in British English, you'd copy this and you'd go over here to your custom config file that we just made a copy of. And you'd come here and you'd paste it just like this. So back to the custom config file, I just want to reiterate, and I cannot stress this enough, to make sure the language matches the region language pack that is installed on your PC. So it's really not a matter of where you live. It is what kind of language pack that comes with your PC. Uh, what language pack uh, maybe you installed by accident. Uh, make sure that it is the right one. So in other words, even though you live in the United States and maybe you bought your, uh, your computer somewhere else, Maybe they have a different language pack installed on that PC that you're not aware of. So one more time, you can go to settings. And once again, time and language. If you go to speech right down here, if you click on this at the very bottom, uh, you're going to see installed voice packages. So it should say, you know, here in the United States, most people will say English United States. But like I said, if you bought your computer and you had it shipped overseas, it may be a different language pack here. And it may say something about, uh, adding a language pack, you know, right up here. If you go back uh, to language and region, you may have to add a language. Okay, so just make sure that that is correct. And then another thing you can do too to make sure uh, Grammar Police is working for you. I uh, go to microphone setup. If you click on this uh, right down here, it should say microphone and get started. Uh, you can also go to if you're on Windows 10, go to ease of access. If you type in ease of access through your settings. Uh, you're going to see something similar to what I'm showing you here and you can go to get started and it's going to detect your microphone here in a second. Then it's going to ask you to set up the microphone and just pick your microphone. I've got several things installed here, but just go to make sure it's your microphone and then go to next and then go to set up microphone. So hopefully that'll kind of help a lot of people out by uh, getting, you know, grammar place to actually recognize your microphone. So let's go ahead and go dive deeper into the custom config file real fast. And let's look at the call signs. So we want to make sure that Grammar Police can understand what we're saying when we say a call sign. So go back to your config file. Uh, this is that one I told you to come in handy. So make sure it's pulled to the side. And if you look right here, that Gram a Grammar Police only uses the phonetic alphabet that is available with Grand Theft Auto 5. Unfortunately, you can't be called Foxtrot. You can't be called, you know, uh, Indigo. And you can't be called Polecat 69. Um, too soon. Uh, so these are some examples. Uh, you don't have to be uh, a number and then the phonetic alphabet and then another number. Yeah, that gets very, rather boring, you know, like 2 Sam 81, you know, I guess rather boring than that. Uh, you could go by a number. You have 517. You could go by 8675309. It does not matter. So that's going to go into your call sign. So if you want to have two phonetic alphabets like Victor Sam 109, you could do that. See where I'm going with this? And of course, Adam 12, you know, it's pretty popular, but um, I'm probably not going to be called Sam 81 anymore. Uh, some of you may get that and some of you may or may not get that. And I apologize if you don't get it, but uh, we'll no longer be called Sam 81. So we're going to name ourselves just for the sake of the video, uh, King 81. So we're going to go up here and go to call sign and we're going to say King and then dash 81. That'll be my new call sign, by the way, after this tutorial. So it'll be King81, uh, at least for now. I might change it. Who knows? So back in your custom config file, uh, you're going to notice it says agency codes. Super important to assign a folder to Grammar Police. So I'm going to show you, if you go back into your Grammar Police folder, you're going to see, once again, all these files right here. If you go to the Grammar folder, you're going to see several other language packs. Uh, that Grammar Police will use in referencing uh, 10 codes, for example, or how uh, Grammar Police could actually work for you. Unfortunately, it only works, it doesn't work for German, unfortunately, but it will work for California, Generic, Immersive, and Met. 
So what do these folders mean? I'm going to show you real fast. If you go back one more time, go back to documentation, click on that and then go to phrase guide. And we're going to click on the English version and it is a PDF file. So what you want to do is look at this PDF file as if they're folders. So you'll see generic, you'll see met, you'll see California and immersive. So what you do is make a, uh, you know, whatever folder you decide to use, it doesn't really matter uh, which one you feel comfortable with. Uh, personally, I use generic and I like to use or put in my own 10 codes, but there's a lot of cool things in here. I didn't know uh, it, for the Met, I'm guessing uh, that'd be more UK is what I'm thinking. And so uh, for example, uh, they use like instead of air control, or I'm sorry, air control, air support or air unit, they use impasse. I didn't know that. Uh, India 99, I didn't know that. Uh, I did hear uh, one time that some people that watch LSPDFR that are, are from the UK, um, I remember this one person made a statement. Uh, they didn't know their own, you know, met uh, 10 codes. And that's okay because I don't know them either. But they use a lot of India 99. So if you want to come back, if you live in the UK, maybe you can come back and learn what's the proper technique that they use for grammar police, for example, you know, or how to respond to dispatch or how to talk to dispatch or animal control. We would say animal control, but I'm going to show you something, some other cool things you can do with grammar police when you customize these things. But RSPCA, and then uh, you can come down here, they, you know, if we're available, they say state two. I didn't know that. But anyway, you can come, come down here and you can kind of learn a little bit about what Met does. Uh, generic is what it says. Generic, uh, it's, uh, you know, code four is code four, right? Uh, we, we could say like code three state or code three state backup. There's a lot of things you can do. Uh, like, for example, you hear me say in my videos, CSI, right? So there's a 10 code for that. Uh, this is in California, by the way, 1144. And I'm not sure what 10 codes that immersive is pulling from. I would like to know. I'm not really 100% sure, to be honest. But uh, I know that these probably universal 10 codes. So if you feel more comfortable, maybe something kind of cool, you could use immersive and you can see the different uh, 10 codes there. But I like to use generic and then add in my own customization of the folder itself. But like I said, you can come back and learn California's. Uh, it doesn't have every single one, but you could probably type in, you know, go to Google, type in California or maybe LA, LAPD uh, agency 10 codes. And you can kind of learn these 10 codes for certain things. But the reason why it's blank is because it may be the same thing as most of these other things, except for probably met, if that makes sense. With all that being said, you need to pick a folder that would best suit you. And once again, we're going to be diving into these in just a moment. But let's go back to custom folder back over here to the left. And we need to pick a folder right there. I'm going to label it. I'm just going to name it generic. But if you like um, immersive, you know, you would type in that. If you like California, you type in that. If you like Met, you type in that. We're going to go ahead and just go back to generic. Now about the controls, I'm not going to make this video too long but there's a lot of things you can do uh, with the controls, understanding what buttons to press and what they mean. So what I would do is um, I would get to the config file that is inside your documentation folder that we've been referring to, right? With the call signs, the languages. And if you go to here to controls, you're gonna see what, uh, you know, what the dispatch key is. The R menu is the right alt key. So the right alt key. And then you can come over here to this URL right here, copy the URL, go to the internet and paste the URL and look for the keys enum. It'll make more sense when you go to the URL and you can change the right alt key. You don't have to have it as that, uh, but that R menu, that's what that means. And uh, you know, it may seem foreign, but just make sure you go to that website. It'll make a lot more sense. And then you can change the rest of these things. Uh, the biggest thing I just want to tell you about is the left control F2. I will bring up the menu key for the settings. So everything you see here, uh, you can pretty much change inside in game, which I like personally, I wish uh, more modders would do that. Uh, that way, if we want to change the config file, we just do it in game, you know, like uh, for example, uh, right here, uh, how will you know what position to, uh, to have the display set at uh, through a config file? So the best way to do that is the left control key F2 We'll get to the settings so uh make sure you save it once you're done and come down come back here and save it now if you want to see how to install the in-car radio uh that came with grammar police uh, it's that folder that's on your desktop uh, it has the grammar police information we just installed and it also had a textures file i told you we'd come back to 
And so I thought we'd go ahead and do it real fast. Totally up to you, but it replaces in-car handheld radio because it's pretty bad evidently. And personally, I just, I don't know. Uh, I don't really care, you know, to be honest. I don't really like to use it, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do this real fast. Hopefully you got some knowledge, you know, with Open 4. But let's go ahead and do it. Let's go to Open 4. Let's pull this up. All right, so this is how you install uh, these files that are in this file right there. It's gonna be through Open 4. I'm gonna go a little fast. I apologize. Should have a mods folder. If you don't, uh, create one. Should already have one. Uh, you should have the 64C. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Uh, make sure edit mode is off. Just turn it off. Go outside your mods folder, click here once, and then turn edit mode on and say yes. And it'll say, uh, probably for you, it'll say copy to mods folder. So if it says show in mods folder, that means you already have it. If it says copy to mods folder, uh, make sure you press copy to mods folder. So we're going to go through this uh, pathway right here, 64C uh, RPF, which we're already here. And then we're going to go to levels, GTA 5, props, uh, lev underscore does, and the V underscore minigame. You open this up and we're going to uh, pop this right in there. So we're going to take both of these files. That's the prop uh, CSID police YTD. That's inside your grammar police and textures. It should be in your desktop because you didn't install this you know, into your game directory. This is on your desktop. Pull these into here. Make sure edit mode is on. If it's if it's off, it'll look like this, a red circle. So make sure edit mode is on. I like both files and pull directly into your uh, the open four into this pathway. Done. There you go. So as simple as that, I just wanted to make sure that we get it installed because I don't like to promise things that I cannot fulfill. Okay, now that'll wrap up part one of Grammar Police, understanding the config file and understanding the language packs and understanding which grammar folder to go into. If you guys have been using Grammar Police, you just want to understand the custom phrases and adding your own in there, to better customize this thing, then you're going to want to stick around to part two of the video, and that's coming up next. Thank you for all the support, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care and stay safe. Thank you for watching Benzo's YouTube channel. Be sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Benzo uploads often, so stay tuned for the next episode.